Good day, students. Welcome to the unit on management concepts and functions. Let's start with the objectives. The learning objectives of the unit are to understand the management concepts, to know about management levels and skills, to learn about the roles, tasks, and responsibilities of the managers, and to understand the management functions. So what does manager do? So obviously manager tries to achieve the organization goals, as I was saying before. So it is the leadership skills that come in so that they encourage others to make sure that we're achieving organization goals. How do we do that? We actually um, arrange for others to do the task. So others, we encourage, we promote, uh, we, we motivate others to do the task, whereas not really that he or she is doing the task. So we get the task done by others to achieve the organization goals. It's another part of management definition. Okay, now, usually, like there is one or two definitions for here, we did not come to one consensus for a definition, okay? So all existing, there were a lot of definitions which are moving and changing, and then um, there is one definition which has been mostly acceptable, and that definition is management is a process of planning, organizing, leading, and controlling the efforts of an organization members, and using all other organization resources to achieve the stated organization goals. Let's go back and do it again. So management is a process of planning, organizing, leading and controlling. We already discussed that. And efforts of organization members. So you know, all those people who are working for the organization and any of the resources that they are available to achieve the stated goals. A goal could be having 100 tourists going to a particular destination or having um, 100 guests filling the hotel that particular day or night or uh, selling 50 tour packages or developing new packages so, or could be anything could be that. Right. Now, so the process is actually a systematic way of doing things. So, and we're doing the same, isn't it? Management is also doing the same thing, isn't it? Hence, management is a process because um, the activities of, they all are linked, planning, leading, organization, and control. So they're interrelated, right? So it's a process and it's actually called continuous process. It keeps on going. Let's say you did one task and you made a one package and you send people and you realize and you got some feedback, right? Now, because you got feedback, you want to improve upon. Then you plan again. Okay, last time I had 20 customers complaining of particular hotel. This time I may change. I may not send my customer to that particular hotel, right? Or up to the particular destination, which is a tour agency. Um, that particular um, guide is actually not able to, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, satisfy the customer requirements or request. He is not able to communicate well. So maybe I need to give them training or whatever it is. So this is actually a process itself because it keeps on going. So management is actually a process. Okay. Now, manager, the person who is responsible for the show, or the operation of the show is a manager, right? So what I do, manager does is actually uses the resources available in an organization. So I still remember, uh, we used to call it M. M for money, M for men, and for manpower or men, M for uh, what's it called the machinery. So it's like they use the resources like M's, which we call M. So like finances, money, equipment, machinery, information, technology, and people. Okay. So they use all. Why? Because they want to achieve the stated goal. Now, every organization um, they will have their own goals, right? because they may have objectives and let's say management goals and obviously they will need to uh, use the whole team to achieve their goals, right? Now, a goal of an organization who is working in healthcare will be different to a goal of organization who is working in tourism or in hospitality or in engineering. But they all have one common thing that they have particular organization goals and they use the resources they have within the organization to achieve those, right? Now, 
George A. Terry and Stephen G. Franklin, they gave a certain key characteristics um, that could be useful or that is useful for to understand the management. So let's look at uh, the characteristics given by George A. Terry and Stephen G. Franklin um, for understanding management. So let's start with the first thing. Number A, it says management is purposeful. Purposeful, that means what is purpose? What exactly are you getting out of it? Because um, it deals with achievement of something. And when you say achievement of something, that means an objective or a goal. So in management, you have some objectives, as I said, organization objectives to what you want to do. So management is done to achieve an objective or a goal. Now, how do we measure the success? So you measure the success either, um, you know, by looking at, you know, how much have you achieved those goals? Let's say for the example over here, if I want to send, um, let's say, a, I want to sell my tourist package from um, India to, um, let's say, at this moment, at this stage, this is COVID, so I'm, I'm wondering where do I send? Let's do the domestic tourism. Let's say I want to send some tourists from Delhi to Jammu, yeah? So we, we have you no know, new train which is going six hours and each in Jammu in six hours. So let's develop a package that to send people to Jammu and maybe Kashmir now. Now, how much, uh, you know, I, I want to send, let's say, uh, 52 packages of a uh, 20 group of 20 each. So 15 to 20 is how much? 1,000. So I want to send 1,000 people in this uh, coming summers, which is coming. Okay. Now, Management will be arranging all those manpower, machinery, resources, internet formation, all those things involving and sending those people over there. If you are able to achieve this goal of sending those, um, you know, 50 group, 50 package of group of 20 each, which, which is making 1,000 of your tourists, you achieve your goals. But if you're not able to do 50, you are not able to achieve the goals. That's where really the success and see what did go wrong. So you see, okay, fair enough. So that was where you look at it, you know, and you find out, oh, where did that go wrong? Why could I not make it 50? And if you make, instead of 50, if you make 60, you say, oh, where did I do well? You understand both ways. So you learn both ways. If I didn't do, okay, what did I not do? If you did you do well, what did I do well? So both things will be considered and that's where I look at it. Okay, now, the second point one was the management makes things happen. What do you mean by that? Managers, uh, management makes things happen. Yes. So I'm not too sure if um, you would have uh, done any work anywhere, but imagine if you had your test, unit test in the school, right? So when you had a unit test, before unit test, you will go and study this, you know, make sure you go back and study your notes if you're taking the class or homework you have done so that you're ready for the next test right and this test is actually it's something it's forcing you to study and go back and find out right now similar way in a management we look at it we look at because the managers focus on the attention and efforts of bringing about a successful action what does it mean is that managers they work together with the team and they want to have a reaction or they, you know, they, they bring the new efforts to uh, involve every team members so that there is something result or output that's coming out or successful action is coming out. For that matter, if I say, so you will as a team leader, as a manager, be involve your team members. One will find out the rights, other person may find out what is happening in terms of rules and regulations in Jammu Kashmir when you want to send people to Jammu Kashmir now, uh, what will be the weather, how much is the airline, which all local travel agents are supporting you, which uh, train tickets will be taking, how will you get the bookings done, which hotel and accommodation they'll be staying, um, you know, who will be taking taxi, local taxi, so many things, isn't it? So a manager will focus on, uh, you know, efforts, what all things will be done together, so that there is um, a successful outcome, right? Now, obviously, as I was telling you, the package the manager will take, the manager will uh, you know, uh, delegate the duties to who will do what and how, what are the actions will be, and you add all those actions and you will have a successful in the results coming out. Now, 
Management is actually an activity, um, you know, it is not, um, it, it's not a, a group or a person. So management is an action, an activity. That means, um, you know, it's like a swimming. Swimming is an activity, right? Swimming is not a person. Similarly, management is an activity. Management is not a person who is a manager. It is not a management. Management is actions that work together to achieve some goals. Right? Now, people who actually do this activity, they call managers. That means activity of planning, organizing, yeah, uh, coordinating and controlling. So these are called managers because, uh, or they could be um, executive, they could be leaders, um, or the members of management committee or whatnot. So what they do, they do the all do the basic same concepts that they plan, they organize, they coordinate, and then they look at their actions. If my actions are okay. Now, management is actually an activity which is distinct. That means this is different. How? That it actually can be studied. Yes, you can study management. Yes, you can. And knowledge about um, how it can be obtained. So you can obtain knowledge about management. And certainly, um, you actually, there are certain skills um, that can be acquired, skills that can be applicable, skills like planning. What are different skills in planning? How do I plan? What is my, you know, uh, steps involved in planning? So in planning, you may have checklists. Do I need to do this, this, A, B, C? And then in terms of uh, coordinating, coordinating anyone, how will I delegate the task? Whom will I delegate the task? When will I delegate the task? How much will I delegate the task or the work to the person? So it's again, the skills can be acquired. You can study that and you can use that for while doing management. Now, it is important to understand that um, there is a tendency to perform all the things yourself in terms of you should be able to get those tasks uh, accomplished or completed um, through the efforts of the group members. That means you are, as a manager, you have the onus or responsibility to make sure that your team is working together to achieve the goal and to get the task done out of them. So always remember, it is it is easy to say, hey, you do this work, you do that work, and you delegate the work. But more so, it is also important to understand who can do what, right? Who has the capacity, who has the right skill, okay? I'll put an example here. There are two boys. One boy is very good in fast sprint. You know, he can do very fast and go, can quickly go and come. Very good in 100 meters race. And there's another the person who's not good at 100 meter race, but he is very good at long races, 800, 400, maybe 800 or maybe 1600, right? Now, when there's an athletic game, would you send 100 meter for 800? No. You would not, isn't it? You would know who is good at 100 and who is good at 800. So we'll put the right person right place, right? Similarly, if you have to give a task, the person who is good in communication will put the person in the front so that he, they can you know, talk to the customers and uh, get the deal done, right? But if the person is other person is good at computers but not so good in communication, we'll put him on the computer. So exactly, the very simple that you make sure as a manager you get the right person get the group to do you know work in a team so that you get the results or the goals of the organization now obviously as i said that it is very important to have the results and you can see the management efforts coming out from the results so let's move on further from here and let's look at the levels and the skills of, in terms of management so we just discussed about the term manager so Manager is a person who is responsible for carrying out management functions. And what are four functions? Come on. Planning, organizing, leading, controlling. So manager is a person who carries out, carries out these four functions, obviously using his team members, right? Now, obviously there's another function that manager does. He actually is responsible for his subordinates. Yes, subordinates, people who are working under his supervision and organizing resources. What do you mean by organizing resources? Let's say that, as I was saying, the same package example from Delhi to Jammu. So let's say if I, you know, one of the, his, um, his team members is very good in computing, he can get all the information 
from the computers and get the things done, send an email or whatnot. But the internet is not working. So who's responsible? Manager is responsible to make sure that he, his team member has the internet so that he can get the work done. So that is organizing resources. Okay, now, or at the time, if the team member does not know anything, so the manager's responsibility is to let the team member know what things are, how things are working, and whatnot. Now, there are different types of managers in terms of responsibilities, the tasks that they perform, this of different uh, types of management duties or managers. So have you heard of the word inevitable? You'll have a front office manager, you'll have a restaurant manager, You'll have a financial manager. You'll have a general manager. You'll have a duty manager. I was also um, working in the hotel. And I was to the assistant food and beverage manager. And where was I? I was in the department called room service. So I was a room assistant room service manager. Now, what is this? In a hotel, the different managers. Why? because we have divided each section into subsections that means i'll give you one good example here um who knows what is pizza okay yes we all know what pizza we love pizza isn't it now your pizza is what size this 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 well it can be three sizes bigger sizes i have seen a pizza this big yes once i was in i think i was in the us and it was a huge pizza huge and they used to sell pizza by slices one slice is so huge and thin, but anyway, there was slice. So, anyways, coming back to the point. Now, in a hotel, you have, um, you know, like let's say hotel is a full pizza, and the hotel means the task, the work that is there in the hotel. One slice, we cut the task, divide the task into slices. So, every slice has its own role to play. So when the customer comes, the front office manager makes sure that his section, when the customer comes and greeting and making sure the, what's it called, booking is done. And then uh, when there's a guest check-in properly, uh, luggage has been taken care, person sends everything, uh, the, the doorman opens the door, uh, the concierge takes and gives the information, everything is done, that's the front office, okay, done. And billing, whatever is done, in the front office. Then person goes to eat food goes to restaurants, the restaurant manager takes care of that his section, right? And then room service like me, I will take care of the person who doesn't want to go to a restaurant, wants to eat food from the, you know, from the bedroom and gives me a call, hey, I want da da da. So I'll take care of my team and so on. Financial manager will look at the um, finances of hotels if, you know, the hotels are being charging the right room rate and are we going into profit or loss, uh, what is expense, what is income of the hotel. And then comes general manager who has overall responsibility, big boss. He takes care of everything. That means he's responsible for the whole pizza, right? He's not just for one section. He's responsible for every section. So that's how I believe you, this will give you example and understanding of different managers in the hotel or uh, as in a management. Okay. Now, how do we, um, you know, demonstrate, um, you know, or the classify managers? So we actually classify as per the levels. So as I said, um, front office manager, we have, um, even if we have general manager, the assistant manager, then we have uh, maybe, uh, you know, head of the department. So we front office manager, food and beverage manager, we have banqueting manager, we have housekeeping manager. Then we go further down levels. We have, um, what is it called? Uh, um, front office supervisor, we have, uh, Kitchen supervisor will have a housekeeping supervisor that goes down further, right? So they go as for the levels. Now, also, they also go as the range of activities they do in the organization. So, what are different duties and activities as a front office housekeeping that they also go there? Now, for each level and range, you literally, literally need different skills because, as I said, the general manager is overall, he must know what is happening in housekeeping, what are different functions and duties in housekeeping, and what if there's, if there's an issue, how to fix that. He must know finance, he must know food and beverage, he must know um, front office, everything, even reservations. So he needs to be overall, that's why big bosses there, he has experience and expertise and he has a lot of skills over there. And then obviously um, there are skills because he may be managing maybe 400 to 1,000 people. You never know, isn't it? And 
a friend of mine he is actually um he is called uh, uh, the sorry, director culinary um at hyatt in sydney so he has 1000 room hotel and he uh, he is a manager of food and beverage department of the hotel so i think he may have um, around 1000 employees or uh, if not around that much well at the moment they're not much because of the covid or the boys in a thousand room hotel where we'll have around 12 to 15 restaurants um and then you know imagine and the bars and what not imagine how many people are working in each restaurant so they also so now we will be dividing it further into um levels first level manager as I was telling you supervisors so they have having a direct contact with the employees producing goods and services now i believe you would know by now what is goods and what is service so this pen is actually a goods so that's something i can tangible i can touch i can feel i can use it is made from the factory comes to me but when it comes to service is for customer service that means when you um you know you, you call a hotel you go to hotel you stay over there and uh, you use the hotel and when you come back what do you bring with you you use the service right so you use the um, when the person speaks to you um you know uh, the way they speak to you the way they make things easier for you it's a service wherein when you go and you buy a pen it's a product so we're trying to make it uh, more tangible that is touchable feelable not very well touchable you know you can see and feel and touch where in um, service it's more of feel right so we'll come to that point so the first one is that our first level managers that you can actually uh, directly interact with people who are working as as i said that front office supervisor housekeeping supervisor so that's first level and then obviously you may have two or three supervisors before you have a manager on top okay it's also known as supervisors obviously um they directly interact with employees um but in tourism um there is there could be a area where first level managers directly deal with the customers um, you never know depending because in tourism you can have a very uh, you can say um, varied type of businesses and you can have a responsibility of manager to have them then comes middle level manager uh, let's not just take hospitality and tourism um, but yes we will keep them because that's where we are coming from so middle level managers are actually those who give directions to first level managers or supervisors that means a supervisor reports um to your um you know middle level manager so let's say your supervisor reports to assistant manager assistant front office manager assistant housekeeping manager assistant uh, food and beverage manager that's where middle level management comes so what does middle middle level management do so middle level management let's say in housekeeping department there's so many hotel room 1000 rooms imagine for 1000 rooms you can't just have one supervisor isn't it so each floor may have one supervisor floor supervisor so for those supervisor to give directions to those supervisor let's say there are 20 floors so 20 supervisors there a lot of activity going on so we may divide that accordingly so these are the middle level managers who liaise and take actions and directions from your um, top level management and get implemented through uh, middle level managers now then comes a top level managers or the executive a general manager you know board of directors and they actually actually make the decision in a bigger way so let's take this way a restaurant manager the highest decision that restaurant manager will take about what type of food and beverage can he sell in in his restaurant or how he wants the service for the day how many staff will he implement, you know get on on what not what when it comes to general manager his decisions could be okay how many rooms can i not sell today or what are different new packages that can bring on what not so if your restaurant manager has to do something he needs to get approval but general manager may also get to approval but general manager has a capacity to do lot many things take bigger decisions and he he can see every department so a restaurant manager will be only looking at his own department right so in in the tourism again if the travel and tourism is there so in tour and travels when you're looking at it you'll be looking at one section of your travel let's say you are only looking at north of india so i'm in the department i'm looking north india in north india also there are many states 
So you might be having a person who is looking for Jammu Kashmir, one is looking for Himachal, one is looking for, let's say, Punjab or whatnot, right? And then you are the one who are dealing with different people because they have different, you know, sections in. And then what if it's a bigger organization like Cox and Kings? Isn't it a big organization? So how many people around the world working for them? Okay, so CETA travels, SOTC. So what's happening? Bigger organizations. So that means they have to break it down. Again, we have to break pizza into small slices so it's easier so that everyone knows what the responsibility and duties are. So the manager who's managing pizza will have to have a bigger decision making power, isn't it? And they can obviously uh, take more decision, look at more product way and, uh, you know, obviously uh, direct or lead the you know, organization as per the required goals. Right? As I was saying, so also managers are, um, you know, I was talking about exactly of, of your general manager. Look at scope of or a range of organization activity they perform, such as functional managers. What are they saying? So they perform in the organization. That means what operations they do. Are they marketing managers? Are they finance managers? So marketing managers going to what function they do? They do marketing. Finance manager do they take care of the finance? Even we have um, uh, what's it called um, banqueting manager. They look at banqueting. We have uh, what's it called um, your yeah, reservations manager. They look at reservations only. Okay. Now, what activities they are um, engaged in? Then comes general manager. As I was telling you, um, he is accountable for everything that happens in that you know particular hotel or the unit or group of hotels. Um, I still remember when I was um, in your age of, well, I shouldn't say that, when I was doing this course, um, I did my uh, internship in um, Ashoka Group of Hotels. And that time I had an opportunity to meet group journal manager who was journal manager of four hotels in Delhi. So it was he was not only manager for Ashoka, the Ashoka um, part. The, the Ashok Hotel, but he was general manager of four different hotels that he had under his supervision. Now, what happens is that there are a lot of functions a general management organization they do. They vary from the size of hotels and activities in an organization. I was just telling you that he was group general manager of four different hotels. So, all in all, what we understood today that a management is actually a skill that can be attained right and it is easier to attain those skills while standing out and it is not that it's only you know by birth and you can have no it is any other skill like a swimming skill management is skill it is divided into levels and every level is there to make sure that we all as a team work together to achieve the organization goals and objectives for today i'll leave you now here and i'll see you in the next session and we shall go further thank you so much for attending the session have a good day.